every time you think of your dad, you just think they're invincible. And I'm still going to say my dad is invincible because everything he's been through. Well, hello there, and welcome to Trucking with Schmidt. On this channel, who knows what you're gonna hear about, but today, I wanna talk about dads. Yep, yep, that's what we're gonna go with. Real quick, we're in Salina, Kansas right now. We did get loaded up in uh, Dodge City, Kansas. We're hauling 41,000 pounds of meat up to Dakota City, Nebraska, weather, it's perfect. I'm gonna guess it's probably around 55, 60 degrees right now. Hey, don't eat it. All right, let's talk about dads. Dads hold a beyond special place in every man's, every boy's heart, you know. And dads, they work. Man, they work hard all the way through the years to support us little brat children. My dad ended up retiring as a uh, paramedic specialist I think he was a specialist paramedic specialist I remember when my dad was gosh I want to say he was selling I'm not sure you guys don't hold me to this but I'm not sure if he was selling seed corn of some sort because I remember I think it was called TCI I, I just remember a green Chevy pickup with a five-speed on it with the letters TCI on the side of it and then I remember when my dad was selling snow plows that was awesome because I got to go snow plowing with dad. And then he'd come pulling up in front of the house with with uh, a trailer full of snow plows. How awesome is that? When you're a kid and you see all that steel and all that iron sitting on top of a trailer, darn impressive. I'll tell you what, I thought that was just the coolest thing ever. Now in my younger years, now this is before I can remember, like way before, my dad was a pig farmer. And uh, we lived out in the country Sadly, I, I can't remember any of those years. I, I was pretty tiny then. When we moved to town, I think if I remember right, he was uh, working for a farmer at least still, because I remember him pulling up in front of the house with a tractor, and then I would get to go on a tractor ride. That was really cool. I loved going on tractor rides as a kid. What kid wouldn't, right? Okay, a few of you guys may not understand this, but back in the day, dads didn't always say, I love you. I mean, that just wasn't a wasn't the thing man you know you misbehaved or you screwed up your dad would smack you upside the head and get better boy and I remember um, my dad tried everything boy he came off the road from uh, selling he came off the road and I remember yeah I was just an out-of-control teenager let's just put it that way the mom just couldn't handle me but I remember being in the backyard with the old man and him having a little heart-to-heart -heart with me on everything and I, I think that was probably the first time I remember my dad saying, I love you. It, it's always been one of those unspoken things. Hey, dad, I love you. Hey, son, I love you. But back then, you really just didn't say it. I mean, <laughs> you just really didn't say it all the time to dad. You know, that's just not the way you did things. While we're on the topic of adolescent years, I guess I could probably tell you about this, too. I remember one time and, uh, during, oh, my, are you leaving already? during my teen years. I don't know if I'd been drinking or doing something stupid in school. And uh, I thought I could take my old man on. Yeah, there's a lot of you that are not gonna have this memory because you were respectful young adults. Me, on the other hand, I was not. And I thought I could take my old man on. What would go through my mind to make me think that I could do that? The guy's arms are twice the size of mine and still are to this day. The guy's hands could, you know, I mean, they could easily crush you just with his hands, but oh boy, I was a teenager, man. I thought I could take my old man on. <sighs> Do I need to say it? Yeah, I lost that one by one swing. And to this day, I thank my dad for that because uh, I'm not saying go out and beat your kids. Good God, don't do that. It's a whole new world, guys. But uh, from that day on though, I, I knew that there was no taking the old man on. That, that just was not an option and that was not gonna happen. And then there was the fun times though. Man, you know, my dad had a 1977 Jeep, Jeep Wagoneer. That thing was fun. 
let me tell you a little bit about that first though let's get some trucking in actually let's get the truck finished up washed up we'll get some trucking in we'll talk a little bit more on more on that topic later on See him there that's what he does when he's got to go to the bathroom right he gets right up beside me and uh, insists that we go and we go now 
Sometimes he just doesn't even want to wait till we get the steps out. In this case, he's going to wait till we get the steps out, though. We're going really slow. I'm sorry. All right, come on. Well, we're about 300 miles into our day right now. We're going to stop here in York, Nebraska. All right, so where were we? Yes, we were talking about our lovely fathers. Fun times. I tell you what, my dad's Jeep. That Jeep was just insane fun. I remember we used to go down to, um, we used to have a railroad trestle in town there. We used to go down there and we'd climb it. Then we'd go driving around on it. And then uh, we used to do a lot of coyote hunting in it. And well, my dad will get all of the goody out of a vehicle. Man, he will just, he will, if you want to test a vehicle, I've always said Ford or Chevy or Dodge, if they want to test a vehicle, you give it to my old man for a couple months, man. Here, put her through the ringer. You know, in, in recent years, probably the past 20 years, he got a 1979 Ford Bronco, which I still have. That thing is sitting in a storage unit right now. And I think we're going to get it out this summer and play around with it. But we used to, when we'd go out to these hunt, this hunting ground that my dad has, we'd go out there and we'd, we'd go on big old hill climbs that would sweep over. And I remember looking out the passenger side going, yeah, we don't want to fall off that cliff, do we? But those are all distant memories. I mean, they're good memories. And uh, there's a lot that I have still, and there's a lot that I still can't remember. But let's just talk about the nows. How many of you still lean on your dad i am 40 years old and i still lean on my dad i mean i i am an over the road driver yes i know the past two months we've been home at least three days a week or if not four days a week half of them you know we've been having a lot of stuff going on at the house but i am an over the road driver that is usually well i'm gone when i'm gone you need a strong wife at home. You need a strong, well, you guys all have seen Warden. She is a strong, stubborn woman, but she's a strong wife and that helps immensely at home. But then there's those things that you need dad for. You know, my dad, he does so much for me when I'm out here on the road. Um, he will, if something needs fix at the house, here go over and here fix it up. If the wife has troubles with her car, you know, here go over and get her going or do whatever he needs to get it going. Um, if Tater Tot or Bud, my kids, if they need a ride somewhere, he's right there. Beep, beep. I don't know why trucks have those beep, beeps. I know some places require them, but man, wouldn't that drive you crazy? Beep, beep. Okay, you're backed up. There you go. You're purposely trying to get muddy now. You're purposely trying to get muddy. Get out of there, Opie. Get out of there. That's mud. Come on. Get out of there. Good God, dog. You're purposely trying to get muddy. Distractions. It's all distractions. Let me tell you a quick little story. When I was first getting started as an owner-operator, you guys have heard me tell you how I, uh, how I did it. And I, I, of course, done it. I, I did it wrong, you know, in the wise of you're supposed to save all kinds of money up and do this, do that. Well, I didn't. I went out and bought a, uh, what was it, a $10,000 truck to get started off in. And I didn't save up all the money. Get out of the mud. Good God, you're about to go back to the truck. Yeah, you're about to go back to the truck. I moved him with my foot. I think everybody heard you whine when I moved you with my foot. You're a baby. So I didn't do everything right. So basically like those first six months of getting started in the truck, of owning a truck, those were dire times, man. You were check to check to check to check. Well, there was one time I was broke down in uh, Walcott, Iowa. Walcott, Iowa was five hours from my house. Okay, I was waiting a deposit into my account from a shipper was supposed to be in there that night or that day. I broke down probably, I don't know, I think it was probably around nine o'clock at night and I stopped and I got the truck fixed. I went up to pay, money wasn't there. Mm, yeah, money wasn't there. So, so I called dad. 
That's what we do, right? We call dad. Dad, here's what's going on. Well, dad, right away, of course. Well, here, use this card number. You, or just pay for it. You pay me back. And I hate doing that. I truly hate doing that. But I figured, you know what? That'll get me out of here. The money will be in the account tomorrow. I'll just put it back over. Where I got fixed, they don't allow outside cards unless the person was there. You know what my dad did? Without me even asking. My dad jumped in his pickup at midnight with a snowstorm coming and he started heading for Walcott, Iowa, five hours away. He was gonna come pay just for I could get the truck out of the shop. I kept going in every hour to get the card, make sure to check it, you know, cause it was supposed to be there. And finally, I think it was three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, somewhere in there, I went in and the card was good. Boom, ran through, I got out of there, had money in the account, blah, blah, blah. I called dad to tell him, hey, I'm up and running, no need to worry. He was already two hours into his trip. He didn't even tell me he was doing it. So what dads will do for a kid just amazes me, no matter how old that kid is. Camaro, like I said, I'm 40 years old. And back then I wasn't 40 years old. Oh my good God. I just looked at the time. I'm gonna be editing this thing like crazy. Gosh darn it. Every day I tell myself I'm not going to talk that much. I'm not going to talk that much. Next thing you know, I look up here right now. If I was to keep all of this in the video, we'd be at 11 minutes. That's almost half of a video. Oh, we got to get going. I got to stop talking. Well, that's just because you talk so much. You talk so much, you even talk for me, Dad. I know, I know. Okay, we're going to run in here. I'm going to run in here. Grab a bite to eat. We're going to get on the road. We're gonna get on Interstate 80, start heading east, and get this girl up to uh, where it needs to be in Dakota City. I cannot be the first person you guys have seen wear throwaway booties in the mud. No, I'm not going to get the rubber ones because the rubber ones I have to put in my truck. These I take off at the step before I even step on the truck and then put them in a garbage bag and they're gone. So yes, I am wearing booties for I don't get my truck muddy. Now worrying about mud in the middle of January in Iowa. Forgot to set the trailer brakes. But worrying about mud in uh, um, in the middle of January in Iowa is usually something you've never heard of. But it's 45 degrees right now. 45 degrees in the middle of January at night. So I can't give the guy who owns this trailer much stress because, well, 
You usually wouldn't expect mud right now. All right, as you can see, I am part as close to grass as I can possibly get, if not on the grass. Any chances Opie is going to stay out of the mud? That'd be much appreciated, Opie. Much appreciated. So I can't really blame the guy for having a muddy yard. It, uh, usually this is spring, then he usually brings in a bunch of rock. But it really isn't worth bringing in a bunch of rock because you know we're going to get snow. We get snow, and then he's got to blade all that new rock off. So we just got to tolerate the mud for a little bit. Now, the reason I've been talking about my daddy all day today is dad's on my mind. Uh-oh. Schmidt's sitting on the step of his truck. That means he's about to have a serious conversation with us. Just really nerve-wracking. That's what it is right now. Well, a little bit before my grandpa passed away, we had found out uh, that my dad has prostate cancer. Yeah. So everybody freaked out. Uh, Mom cried a lot because, well, Mom cries a lot. In a funny way. Usually she cries a lot, but this was a sad way. She cried a lot. Um, he went in for all the tests, all the fancy stuff that doctors do. And uh, they determined that all the cancer has stayed inside his prostate. Probably about six hours from now, dad's going to go under the knife. They're going to go in and they're going to take it out. And then they're going to take, uh, apparently they're going to take a few other little samples around the area to make sure that he, uh, that it has not spread. Now, anytime you say the C word, you know, you automatically assume the worst. I've been doing pretty good because of my industry, I think. Um, you know, us as truckers, um, cancer kind of follows truckers around like a, like a cat follows a mouse type of thing. You know, it it's, let's just say we are not the healthiest breed of uh, people out here. This is where I need you guys. And this is where... I need my subscribers. I need your assistance in this, all right? I know there has to be guys out there that have had prostate cancer and are full-blooded survivors and everything went great. So what I'm needing right now is I'm needing your success stories. When I say success stories, I say success. I mean, I, I really can't handle any, uh, any negative feedback on this right now not today in another video you guys can throw all your negative stories my way but me and the family we, we need some positive stories of uh, survival on this just to make my mom feel a little better um, I think dad's doing pretty good you know how how can the man do you know um, he's had a rough year I guarantee you the man has had a rough year lost both of his parents and then found out about this whole um, cancer thing but that's where dads, dads are almost invincible. Every time you think of your dad, you just think they're invincible. And I'm still going to say my dad is invincible because everything he's been through. I mean, and the man just keeps going. He stays positive. He stays as about as upbeat and happy as a man can right now. I, I know this video is stretching out and I truly sorry about that but here's another thing he he doesn't even want want uh you know with this whole virus thing going on he doesn't want anybody up in the hospital with him because he's, he's worried about everybody i hate to break his heart and he can convince my mom to stay home but i already had planned on driving him up here to the hospital because right now we're in sioux city iowa and that's where the surgery is going to be and i had already, had already planned on driving him up to the hospital well, I just found out that where he's having it has actually started letting one person come in with him when they have surgery. But dad, you know, stubborn dad, oh, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. Well, I'm like, dad, it's a, it, it's a four and a half hour surgery, man. Yeah, I don't want you guys waiting around. Dad, I know you're watching this after your surgery because your surgery is in a few hours. Guess what? You had to have guessed I was going to go in and stay, right? I mean, really? Really? Okay. 
So yes, I'm, I'm going to go in there and stay with the old man. So what I'm looking for is just positive stories of how you guys have survived prostate cancer or your dads or your brothers or your grandpas have. Um, and of course, if you're the prayer and type, I'm gonna throw some prayers his way, that'd be much appreciated. And if you're not the prayer and type, put them in your thoughts. I figure, you know, we are coming up on 16,000 subscribers. That's flat out amazing. But if I can get 16,000 prayers heading his way, wouldn't that be something? I know. Yeah, I know. You're all muddy. How did you get money? This is grass and you're muddy, which means my truck's going to be muddy. We're not in it and on a downside. Dad's gonna be fine, he's gonna pull through. They're gonna get it all sliced and diced out of him and uh, here live another, God, forever, right? That's what, that's what I tell myself in my head. My folks live forever. You guys stay safe, and as always, I'll see you next time. Yep, you guys guessed it. We have another blizzard rolling in. That's right, fun times. Right now I'm in the parking garage here at the hospital where dad had his surgery. Um, it's, it's been four and a half hours later, just got the news that dad is out of surgery and uh, heading for recovery. Um, you guys have not seen this video yet, but I, I know you're gonna pray for him because he still has a long road ahead of him. He still has a long road of recovery and he still has a long road of tests to make sure everything is out of there. Um, surgery went good. I did give him a new name though. I'm gonna start calling my dad Cheeks in the Wind. My dad's never had a surgery before, guys. Never. <laughs> he had to wear a hospital gown. And I'm gonna call him Cheeks in the Wind. Well, you guys have a good one. I'll talk to you later.